current statistics show that Uganda has 4.9 million internet users. Out of these, over 90% are Facebook users, while 4% are on Twitter. With the numbers mushrooming, many people are creating jobs and earning income off the internet and social media in particular. Joseph Oweno, an IT expert's work depends on the internet as he builds websites and manages an online sports newspaper, Kawowu. Oweno says social media is key to his business. So social media is equally a critical part. Uh, but you notice with the change in, uh, in the patterns is that more and more critical information is being published on, on social media. So it's easy for me to follow NTV News on, on their Twitter account and it's easy for me also at the same time to be able to know how much the cost of a meal is at a particular restaurant. Social media platforms were turned off during the elections and during the swearing-in of President Museveni. Oweno says that the two times the state has disabled the networks have resulted into great losses for him. Every single thing revolves around the internet and social media. It doesn't matter if it is my business. When social media and the internet is, is, is affected, then it means our, client cannot, our clients cannot receive our services. Now, the government is saying that it will continue to turn off social media support in case it detects signs of abuse and circulation of false information. ICT Minister John Nasasra says that social media users should not blame the government but those who misuse it. Technology is being used irresponsibly to blow up planes in the air. So you can imagine if you are on that flight. So if government can block something like that, is that, will you go around and say you are denying me my rights? Nasa Srawa speaking during the ACI Awards Gala at Serena Hotel, an event at which innovators in technology were appreciated. He said the government would not take chances when the country's security is threatened. The Nambu government will not accept that, but will accept for people to have their freedom to use it for peace and development. Owenu does not agree with the government's decision. The government's approach to shutting it down is not the right approach in my opinion. Uh, I personally think that uh, the communication platform should be open for everyone. And it's that same platform that government should use to come up and counter whatever wrong information is there. I personally think that government behaves this way because they are not in the space and so they are just playing catch up. The, the, the solution there is that government needs to get onto social media. He says that there are mechanisms through which government can individually clamp down on social media misusers instead of making others suffer. If there is someone, a terrorist, who is using Twitter and using Facebook, there is a, an existing way to work in, in partnership with these social media networks to get that person and prosecute them. Lawyer and human rights activist Nicholas Opio adds that this move to crack a whip on social media users is open to misinterpretation. So I hope and pray that government begins to appreciate the power of social media as a power for social good, a power for reaching out to people, a power for mobilizing, for democratizing debate and accountability in this country and, and begin to encourage as opposed to threaten uh, social media use. With the increasing importance of social media in Uganda, the number of people abusing it is also on the rise. It's for that reason that government is coming out to put down on it. It could even be more tighter if the Uganda Communications Amendment Bill 2016 is enacted. In the amendment contained in the Uganda Communications Amendment Bill, the minister seeks to assume absolute power in section 93 subsection 1 part a 2 and i quote make regulations for the beta carrying into effect the provisions of the uganda communications act the current law directs him to seek powers from the parliament solomon kawesa ntv